This is Drom Shekasuto. Thanks for watching. Bezat Hashem. We're willing to to climb, climb with our learnings to higher places all the time. Um, like that a person when he sits to dine, to eat, it's not a it's not supposed to be a hobby to sit and eat. No. You need to eat and that the food will take you somewhere. You eat because you want to work with that, f with that power, with the energy that you'll, you'll take from the food. Just to see it. And also Torah, learning Torah, even more so. It cannot be a hobby of a person. Oh, me, I like to hear Torah classes. No. It's... Uh, it can become such a, a, a poison, the Torah can become poison. Like that it's written that if a person purified himself, Zacha, that he was pure enough, means by the effort of his work, Naset lo sam chayim. So the Torah becomes a potion of life, a cure, it's healing him. But if the person didn't do what he was supposed to as a preparation for the learning, Lo Zacha, is not pure. Now set lo samavet. It becomes a lethal poison for him. The same learning. Two guys sitting on the same bench, learning the same class from the same teacher with the same books open. One is being poisoned, and one is is rising, is healing. All of his flesh, all of his soul, is recovering and refreshing and renewing with new power, and the other guy is drowning. The other one will come back home and start shooting his wife and screaming, What are you doing? We'll learn the opposite. We're not allowed to do this. We're not allowed. Burning his own house with his bare hands. For what? Because the poison <laughs> that he'd been poisoned with in the class. And it was an amazing class. But he came with no vessels. He came with the wrong intention. And therefore the Torah that is fire... The Torah that is, is energy just cracked him completely and, and he lost his mind because of the fire of the Torah. Now how a person will build those vessels, it depends on the intention, in the real desire of a person. What do we really want to achieve from life? Why really we're walking to new places to learn? Why are we listening to those classes? What brings us to those events? What brings us really to open the books and to learn what's your intention when your intention is pure so then the water will come and will heal you but when the intention of a person is wrong is twisted and bent and he wants to win he wants to succeed he wants to 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 earn certain things or just to run away from his commitments and just to hang out where there is air condition with a bunch of guys sitting and learning Torah so it's also not the best intention in town. Yesterday, in a certain class that I, I gave online, I spoke about the fact that the world is a creation. And the world is not our individual experience, and that's it. There is a side to look at it, to observe, to try to understand what's really going on here in this world and to see it as a creation. And when you understand what it means that it's a creation, I think it can open our minds to very high and deep understandings. And I'll explain. Let's say that you're going through a certain war, a certain fight in your life. You're in the middle of an argument, of a fight, something is going on, there are a few people involved and you're holding in a certain position. Now it's true that that's your private and individual experience now in the current time, in, in the present time. That's what you are going through in your house, with your neighbor, whatever. You, something is going on, yeah, that's your reality. But when you slam the door, you're not aware to the fact that in tens of thousands of houses, in different towns, in different villages, in different cities, in different countries, 
doors are being slammed in the same moment from a similar reason. And there are different people over there that have different languages, different color to their skins, different nations, different cultures, but they're going through a similar situation now, exactly, in their houses, with people that are representing the same idea, the same thing, as those people that are standing against you in your battle. And if you're going to be a hero in that war, if you're going to be a strong person, an honest person, an honorable person, a straight and, 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 and good person in that situation, by that you joined to thousands and thousands of good people that are going through wars and arguments and fights in their life. And the success of you being that honest person and good and kind person all the way, but also a hero and strong and using your wisdom and fighting for the poor and protecting them. By doing that, you attach yourself to that holy group of people that are doing the same in different states, in different countries, in different villages. If you're a fisherman and that's your living and you go and you just fish and here you fish in the ocean and someone else fish in the lake and someone else in the streams, in the rivers, in the springs, everyone brings out the fish from his place, one on a boat and one with a rod and one with a net and everyone is doing his job. But when you're doing your job, you're part of something that is much greater than your individual bubble that you are self-centered in it. That you're focused in your need to pull that fish out of the lake because you are hungry or you need to sell it or that's your hobby or whatever you go through. You're part of something much greater. There are thousands and thousands of people that in the same time going to the sea, going to the lakes, going to the rivers. It's a movement of millions of people that are moving in the same way, in the same time, supervised by the Creator. And it's all synchronized by the Creator that is moving the creation in a certain direction. You're sitting and learning Torah, you desire the truth. There are people in Mexico, there are people in New Zealand, there are people in Saudi Arabia that are desiring the exact same thing as you, and you are doing it together. In your mind you're separated because you're not aware. You still don't understand the greatness of the Creator. How everything is tuned and connected as one. But in every moment when a thought is crossing your mind, it's not your thought, it's part of the creation. Something is going on. And not only your individual life in the present time. There is something even deeper than that. Because we are part of a process that started in the earliest days of creation when the Creator sent Adam and Eve down to this world. And He had to attempt them and to invite them and to call them to get into the Garden of Eden. And He had to bribe them with words. He had to pull them. And He convinced them and told them, Hey, come. And when they went in, He locked the door. And there is a flipping sword that is killing everyone that tries to get out from that Garden of Eden and doesn't let no one out. And the Creator, like the Trashi is saying, He attempted them. In Genesis it's written that the Creator invited them and Rashi is saying He told them nice things to convince them, bribe them, call them, hey come, don't worry, it's going to be so amazing, so fantastic. And suddenly slammed behind their back and there's a snake crawling in the garden between the grass, between the trees, with his scam, with his f f crazy ideas, with his horrible and negative attitude, wants to damage, wants to ruin, wants to, to destroy. And now there's a struggle. Now you are part of a creation. We are part of a creation. We're not only individuals that are struggling. We are part of something much, much greater than we can understand. Now, where is it taking us? It's taking us to that place that all the generations were waiting for the moment of redemption. 
that will finally become the present time. In a certain moment, all the circles will be complete, will be finished. All the processes and all the preparations and all the investments and all the work and all the sweat and all the tears, all the sorrow, all the seeding and all the plowing, all the harvesting, all the hours of work that billions of people invested in creation in different generations. Crossing that bridge today in 2019 is not the same thing as crossing that river or, or that canal 200 years ago or 500 years ago or 2000 years ago. People were crossing the same road back then on back of horses or in swimming or in raft or whatever. Tiny boats that they built by themselves with their bare hands with, with, with stones and, and wood and, and carving boats in it and, and, and sailed. And it took them three weeks when you're doing it today in seven minutes and pay tolls. But the Creator, for him, from his point of view, you are part of something that is much greater than you. You feel, all right, I'm on the road, I'm going, I'm doing this and that, but you're part of something much deeper than that. Millions of people are crossing that canal. Millions of people are crossing that bridge. Millions of people that you are part of them and you are disconnected from the purpose of understanding it. It's hard for us to grasp the big plan. The complete plan of the Creator, because we are isolated in our mind, in our inner sorrow and pain and our fears. And by that we're being separated from each other and from the purpose of creation. Because if something just now happened to you, you don't see the reason for that. And you don't see the results of that. And you barely can understand what just happened in your life. You're not able and willing to face reality. That I've been cut in that finger yesterday when I was with my son in a certain store and something hit my hand. I, all right, I, I was busy with that, but that drop of blood that fell from my finger down to the ground was part of something much greater. Billions and billions of drops of blood fell down on that ground. And the ground is soaking and taking that blood in so many ways. And it means so much. Sometimes it can happen to you because of a certain tiny toy. Sometimes it happened in a war. Sometimes the people died after that and sometimes people recovered. Sometimes people scarred for life and sometimes people couldn't care less and moved on. All those things are completing a larger picture. Now when we are stuck and blocked in our mind, in our individual experience, and we cannot see more than that, and we cannot accept that there is even more than that, because we're so bothered with our issues. I must pay my rent. I must eat that meal. Like I have to, what's that smell? What's going on? Why is he calling? What, what's, what's the deal? All those questions are coming to the person when he is really disconnected from the purpose. When your mind is attached to a greater plan than your mindset and you realize there is a creator and the world is a creation and all the leaves and all the particles of creation, all the cells are contained, are building, co composing together the whole creation and not only the creation of our present time, also all the history Suddenly you can look back and understand the real reason why you are here right now in this house. Why not in another house? Why being hosted by those people and not by others? Why sitting on a certain chair and not on another? You had many options in your eyes, but there is a deeper plot. There is a deeper meaning. In that chair there are certain fibers that hold inside of them certain spiritual sparks. And all those things are known only to the Creator Himself that only He knows the completion of the creation. And He knows exactly that you need to sit for 47 minutes and 12 seconds on that chair in a certain position and after a minute to change position and then to get up and to walk out from the house. And you don't know why and you cannot understand by but there are rivers, there are streams of energy, of spirits that are being transformed from one to the other, 
from one situation to the next by eating, by drinking, by thinking, by talking, by hearing, by listening, by caring, by feeling, by, by expressing, by soaking, by denying, by arguing. In every moment of your life, something much greater than your ability to understand is taking place in your life. And when you look back, when you look back at the history, Today you look at yourself and you say, all right, my name, my family name is Cohen and I'm Mr. Cohen. And now as Mr. Cohen, I need to, like, I have my job. That's my office. That's my house. That's my car. I hate it. And, but whatever, you need to go from, you need to cross the bridge. So you, you go on your road and that's it. That's how you see it. But you don't understand that the fact that you're Mr. Cohen in that house with that car, is a part of something much greater. But if you would understand that the family of the Kohanim that were the same family that had been chosen thousands of years ago to serve the Creator in a certain way and then been kicked out from the temple, lost their job, at least for now, and went to the exile and been separated from their purpose and whatever happened with them and went to different countries and been exiled and been chased and executed and killed and destroyed and humiliated and then tried to come back and did this and that and in different countries, in different states and your family, your tree, your branch, your, your tribe, your part of something much greater, families are expanding. Families are growing. The tribe found themselves growing in numbers, multiplying and conquered the earth. And we don't recognize that because we don't have that memory. So we use that Kohen family name just for you to remember because it's a very famous and known name that represents something that started 3,000 years ago. So you can understand. But your family, even if your family name is not Kohen, also started a few thousand years ago somewhere. There was a father and a mother and they got married and they brought children to the world and their children got married as well and built houses and those houses went and get and 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 spread as well and their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and they moved states and they've been exiled and been chased and been killed and been insulted and hurt and they decided to take their stuff and to walk away and that's your branch and your family and today you're here but you are not only who you are with those car keys and that car on your way to the office. You are that family. You are a tiny branch that is connected to, th to, to thicker and thicker branches till you reach the source, till you reach Adam and Eve. That their children are us. And all human beings, all population of the world are one family. Those are people. We all started from Adam and Eve. Even if we have been separated to nations and the colors of our faces been changed and we're using different languages, different concepts, different ideas, different visions, different histories, different stories, tales, hopes, whatever, all those things doesn't matter the fact that we are one in our spiritual root. And as a person that wants to connect himself to the truth, we must understand that there is one truth. And the truth is not only the portion of truth that you hold in your hand. For an example, and I gave that example, if I was, as a breast level chassid a few years ago, going every night to the fields and going and doing hitbo de duyot for hours and hours and hours, and I did, and I was, and I was going and leaving the house to three hours hitbo de dut, and four and five hours hitbo de dut, and six hours hitbo de dut every night, and that's reality. That's the truth. It's part of the great truth of my life that I was able to bring myself out of the house and to pray to Hashem, to the Creator of the world, for hours and hours and hours, many, many nights in a row, for many, many years. And by that I achieved certain things. But that's only part of the truth. There is another part of the truth. That when I was doing Hidbodeduyot and I was alone with Hashem, my wife was in the same thousands of hours alone with the kids. This is also part of the truth. This is also part of the truth that needs to be told 
that we must say, that we must mention, that we must consider, that we must think of. It's not only that, oh, he was going and doing thousands of hours of it bodedut. It's great, it's amazing, it's fantastic. But in the same time, he left his poor wife for thousands of hours, for thousands of nights, that she would be alone that she would be worried, that she wouldn't know what's going on, and how many nights he didn't answer the phone, and how many times she texted him and he couldn't reply, and he said, I'll answer her later, and she was crying. All those things are part of the real truth. Those experiences took place in her life when I was in the fields, talking to heaven, doing tshuva, coming back to Hashem, confessing my sins, praying on the redemption. She was in her house with her children, alone without her husband, worrying, don't know what's going to be. Really, to be a realistic person, you need to hold the rope in both of his ends, in both of his sides. You cannot just know me, I'm a flashlight, I'm a lighthouse, I'm going, I'm illuminating the world when I'm bringing darkness to the mind of, of my family, on the heads of my beloved ones, or the ones that should be, or supposed to be, or assumed to be my beloved ones, when I forgot about them, when I was self-centered and thinking about myself. But the Creator is above our narrow mindset, our constricted minds that are trapped in fears, in anxieties, in pressures, in lusts and desires, and isolated in horrible darkness of exile, of the individual, that everyone is suffering from his mental sicknesses and he's worried all day long and he doesn't know what to do and his financials and his money and his future and what's going to be and he's talking over the phone and don't interrupt me when I'm talking and you are not realizing what's going on when the complete picture is blocked from your eyes, you don't see. And by not seeing, you're separating yourself from it. And by that, not understanding how to fix reality. Because to fix reality can be only by connecting yourself to God, to the source of truth. <laughs> and why we're saying that God is the source of truth? Because like that verse is saying, Hashem Elohim Emet, your God is the God of truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. It means that the fact that there is a Creator, that God is, exists, is the truth. Therefore, He's the God of truth. If there is God, so He's the God of truth. If there's no God, God forbid, there's no God, okay, so now, He's not the God of truth. It's a lie. It's a false prophecy. It's all, it's all just stories. It's tales. It's, a, it's just a lie. It's a fake. It's a foreign faith. But when there is a God of truth, and He is, exists, just being who He is, doing his job, created the world, creating the world, running the systems, making things happen, supervising, creating, doing, moving, bringing, taking, doing his job as a creator. When that's reality, if you deny it, doesn't change the fact that it's a truth. And therefore we know and we believe that the God is the God of truth. That the creator, that we all believe in him, he is the God of truth. So if you want to connect yourself to the large picture, to the completion of reality, you need to be realistic. You cannot be just desiring Hashem, wanting the light, hoping for salvations, going into the night. No, there is another side to that coin. Your wife, she's alone in the house and she's crying. What are you doing with that? It's part of reality. No, I want to invest, I want to make money. It's not only while serving the Creator. It's in every situation in life. You want to work, you want to make money, you want your children to go to school. We took our kids out of school after realizing that I am much better than all the rabbis that they had in schools over the years. Like uh, one, one billion percent, like 100 percent. I'm a better teacher to my children with all my lackings, with the lack of time that I have, with the lack of skills that I have, with all my weaknesses, with all the fact that my mind is so troubled, with so many things, like for sure I'm much, much better than all the teachers that we saw in our life, like in our life experience. So we realized you need to be realistic. It is a beautiful thing to 
kick your kids out from the house at 8 a.m. or 7.30 every day and to receive them back at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. It's, per it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. No one is arguing. Not to have the kids for 8 hours, 12 hours every day. It's fantastic. But to think about it a little bit deeper is needed. Like, do you know what they're going through in school? Do you understand what they're going through in the best school with friends? If I will remind myself of what that I went through in school, and I was strong, and I was powerful, and people liked me, and whatever, but I went through hell in school. It was hell. It was 100% hell. And when I sent my kids to school, I thought to myself, all right, you're sending them to the best place in the world. It was a yeshiva. It was a cheder Talmud Torah. <laughs> it's a joke. It's the most hilarious joke. It was troubling. Like, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was a nightmare. From the first day it was nightmare and when the second kid went to school it was the worst nightmare. And when the third one we didn't know what to do. And when the fourth one started we already decided that's it. We're not going to abuse the fifth. That's it. And, we, like, and thank God we were able to pull them. And where are you going to pull them? Into reality, to your house. And then you start sitting with them and you're trying to teach them and you think you're going to make it and then you fail again. But the results are very nice, very good. Why? Because at least they haven't been abused in school. At least they haven't been molested in school. At least they were not bullied in school. At least certain things we know for sure that we saved them from. We know they were in the house. It was not perfect. It was not easy, that's for sure. But at least we know certain scars they won't carry for the rest of their life. Certain things. Now that's to be realistic. It doesn't mean that it's easy. And we're not millionaires. We're not rich. We're not wealthy. We're not. No, we were able. No, we were not able. We were cleaning the ground with our beards and, and, and with my, when my wife was breaking her fingernails, scratching the floor. We didn't have no money, we didn't have no power, we didn't have no support, not from the family, not from community, nothing, just we were trying to be realistic. When we saw certain violence behavior from a teacher that is supposed to hug and to love your child, supposed to teach him, supposed to... So we said, no, let's put an end to this relationship. Let's just not let him affect his angers and his bad attributes on our child and we were strong and brave enough to do it and we didn't consider all the results and all the the consequences of that act but at least we looked at it not only from our angle of how comfortable it's gonna be to kick your kid out from the house at 8 a.m. and to receive him back with a loving smile at 5 p.m. that was not the only angle that we were looking at that picture from so in every situation in life, you need to bring yourself to a higher level, a higher level concept of understanding of, of, of the whole reality. You want to serve Hashem. I'll tell you something. If you really want to serve Hashem, do it. You are not being held back in that aspect of your life in no way at all. Where you feel trapped, you feel that you're not able to serve the Creator. When you start, when you try to follow guidings of other people that are trying to convince you that there is only one way to serve Hashem and it's theirs. And they are the main ones to lead that route and they are the main ones to guide you and they are going to tell you exactly which books you need to learn, exactly in which synagogue you need to pray, exactly in which hours and how you should kosher your kitchen and what you should do with your children and how you should treat your wife and how the wife should treat her husband. All those guidings that will enter into your mind, if you are going to buy them, you are going to lose your identity. And you will be swallowed to a certain matrix system that is, that is just like kidnapping individual souls from being individual and having a free choice to be a community of, of, of drones, of robots, of, of, of soldiers that are doing the same thing. And, but the Creator, He Himself planted and treasured inside each and every one of us a different spirit, a different soul. And as our faces and portraits different from each other, and our fingerprints and our eyeballs and all of ourselves 100% different than someone else, 
also our souls and our spiritual needs and also our inner connection to the Creator is unique and special and individual. And no one in the world knows your password, your code, your Wi-Fi password. No one can give you your password. Only you can find it. There are certain things. Everyone should put the plug. Everyone should keep it in a dry place. Everyone should, certain things, everyone, you need to eat. You cannot live without eating. You need to drink. But to tell you if you need orange juice or apple juice or, or water, fresh water from the faucet, you, no one can tell you. Only you know what the results, how you feel after drinking, how your body functions after you drink um, apple juice. Me, if I drink apple juice, I like the taste. But my body feels like something wrong, something foreign came into me. I don't know why. I'm not allergic to apples. Just, I don't know, apple juice, cider, don't feel good. I, when I drink it, doesn't feel good. I don't know why. Uh, orange juice, when it's hot, I can enjoy it. When it's cold, I don't feel that it does, it good, does good for me. I don't know why. I don't have a clue why. But that's how I feel. Now you might feel the exact opposite. Apple juice, the best thing in the world for you. Maybe. Maybe you have certain things that need to be completed by those sparks that are hidden and treasured in apple juice. And me, myself, I don't belong to that section in the world. I need something else for my healing, for my recovering, for my completion. And everyone is different and only you can know if to eat meat is healthy and good for you or not. If to eat vegetables or raw vegetables or steamed or, 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 or cooked vegetables and which kind and when. And if early in the morning you need to eat or later in the noon or only in the evening you know yourself my father was drinking cup of Turkish coffee in the morning and that battery was holding him until 11 at night and he would come and eat his meal for years that's the way he was eating that the way he was drinking that was he was drinking cup of Turkish coffee half of a cookie in the morning and on that battery he would work until the middle of the night every day and he was a hotel manager and driving and going and smoking boxes and boxes of cigarettes all day long that's him God will give him long life this person is over 70 and working and, and working out in a gym like the, the person is strong you don't know what's his secret. You don't know what's going on with him in his life. Another person, if he doesn't start his mo morning with a very heavy breakfa breakfast, it, like he cannot start his engines. He's just not able to continue to start his day. A person needs to eat a sandwich. Someone needs to eat something, meat, every morning. So, there are people, they cannot start their day without a frank. There are people like that. And those people are, are connected to themselves. They're not disconnected. They are connected and aware to their physical needs and also to their spiritual needs. They can understand what they need. And sometimes they're not tuned. But still, as an individual, you must allow yourself to let your feeling be expressed. You must listen to your inner voice, you must listen to your soul, you must listen to your body, and you must follow it. You must understand that the Creator built and shaped and designed you in a certain way that is showing you what's your life purpose, what's the meaning of your life, what you need to do, what is required for you to accomplish the goals that are, are, are the purpose of your life, what you need to do in life. And if you're not going to believe in yourself, means if you're not going to know yourself first, if you're always going to listen to other people and going to follow other people's opinion, you're never going to find your inner connection. Because the Creator, the God of truth that created all those worlds that we said, that He is spending the time, the eternal time, with all the creations. When every fish is swimming in the sea or in the lakes or in the rivers, in all the streams, or also in the fish tanks, in all the houses, in all the lands, in all the, the, the apartments, in all the buildings of all the children and adults that have that hobby of, 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 of having fish tanks in their houses. And, and let the filter um, flood the living room every Monday and Thursday. A hobby that I had for many years, trying to get rid of it, Bo Hashem. Going to therapy in those days. <laughs> so, the Creator, He lives and spends His time 
with every individual fish, in every tank, in every lake, in every water. The Creator, He is the only one that lives with all those animals, with all particles of creation from within. He's not only with them from outside, from the side of the individual private supervision on that food, that he will find that, that fish, that will find that food, that deer, that will find that grass. Not only from outside, he's also with him in his thoughts. He's also with all the deers, with all the goats, with all the sheep, with all the birds, with all the animals, with all the cockroaches, with all the ants, the tiny bugs. He's with them in their mind. He's walking with them and he's the plan. He is the hopes, he is the desires. The Creator is the life form of the whole wide world. He is the completion, the inner completion, the inner channel of life to this creation. Now from outside you cannot see him at all. We can talk about him, we can describe him, we can try, we can fantasize, we can talk, we can imagine to ourselves that we know, oh you don't know and it's written here and it's written there and you should read that book. All those are nice speeches, amazing theories. You really want to connect yourself to the Creator? The inner connection is the only one connection that is 100% pure. But you need to dare to face it. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.